Welcome to Advanced Nurses. We connect with nurses who inspire other nurses by sharing their experiences. And so we're able to bring that information to you. Hi, I'm the Educational Consultant at Advanced Nurses at ACD for N. And so today I just thought about something as I was in a session this weekend with someone who's interested in entering the healthcare. And I started to discuss medical coding to this individual. And they said, oh, I'd like to learn more. So I said, well, you know, I would like to specifically teach you about risk adjustment. That may, you know, really be intriguing for you. And I am a certified risk adjustment coder. So this is, you know, within my scope. And so as I was speaking with this individual, you know, they're in their, in their, they're in their 20s, so they have enough time to map out what they want to do career-wise. I thought about, you know, how as you get older, you know, and you have to make those decisions about what you want to do with the rest of your career, why it's so important to actually have a plan that spans out 10, 20 years. So many nurses, when I approach them and I ask them, you know, especially if a nurse is saying to me, you know, I just don't feel like, you know, I'm learning, I'm gaining any new skills in my job. You know, I kind of feel like, you know, this is not really something I, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to do this. I think about how I felt, you know, before I sought after, you know, someone who could mentor me and train me in medical coding. And, you know, it's nursing is a very rewarding field because there's ways that you help individuals that you know you have made an impact on their life. But nursing can also be the type of um, industry that sometimes, depending on how long you're working at your job, sometimes things can become so repetitive and you almost feel a sense of, you know, what am I doing? Am I going to be able to do this till I'm 70? You know, so a lot of nurses you see, they kind of retire from the floor and they go into education because it allows them to kind of slow down a, a bit or at least change, you know, gears. Like they kind of switch their mind into a different avenue, something that's less labor intensive. And so I was thinking about medical coding because I thought to myself, well, medical coding is an area where you can continue to expand and grow. You know, if you decided that you wanted to gain more certifications um, or you wanted to gain more exposure to other areas of health information management, this is the perfect area to do it because within this area of healthcare, you know, healthcare, health information management is a space where you will always learn for your peers. You will always learn from your, like your seat, the, your networking events when you're gaining your CUs. Um, you will always learn from your chapter meetings, you will, there will always be opportunities for you to meet with your chapter and meet with other people within health information management. And as a nurse, you actually have so much more to pour into um, the conversations or, you know, uh, even doing presentations. I know I did a presentation for my chapter. Um, and a lot of this has to do with the fact that there's so much of your knowledge as um, a healthcare professional that complements what HIM professionals know. So these individuals are coming from a different mindset, but, you know, when you work together, it enhances that, that learning experience. So the educational opportunities within HIM, they, it's so rich, you know, and it reminds me sometimes of when nurses become entrepreneurs, which is another great thing about HIM. Once you become certified, that's something you can work for yourself, right? You can get an EIN number and work for yourself because those certifications and the knowledge and the maintenance of those certifications, for the most part, they're, they're usually yours, right? There's some employers that will pay for them, but for the most part, most people have to obtain those certifications prior to working. So you can get a lot of skills and gain a lot of skills um, by working for someone. But after some time, if you say, you know what, I think I could take this show on the road. I think that could be more impactful working across many different clients, or maybe you want to work within different states. Um, you want to have a, a lot more impact within HIM because you want to kind of expand your service. You can do so, you know, because those certifications for the most part, those are all yours, right? Your CEUs or you, are yours. In some cases, of course, you may have an employer that reimburses you for the credentials and for the CEUs. And maybe there may be, I guess, maybe some contractual agreement. I don't know. I've never signed such a thing before. 
<laughs> that because they paid for something, I can only use it with them. You know, recently um, I went through a project management program and um, um, my employer did pay for it, but I never thought that I was obligated only to use those skills for my employer. So <laughs> for me, it was just something I put in my toolkit. So um, I'm saying all this to say, you know, if you are interested in HIM for either reasons of planning out your future, what you want to do, you know, I guess uh, as you get uh, closer to your retirement age or retirement ages, so like you're really thinking far ahead, or if you just need to shift a bit within healthcare um, in a way where you're not just doing so much patient facing, you're not, it's not as labor intensive, but you're more so kind of using your brain, right? You're using, you're doing a little bit more critical thinking, you're applying new knowledge, of course, because ICD-10 codes is not something anyone, there's no part of nursing that's just casually teaching this, even in, in nursing informatics, they're not teaching, I, um, they're not teaching ICD-10 codes, right? So uh, my encouragement is that as a nurse, if you're interested in transitioning anywhere in healthcare, I would probably say this is an area to start. And I would probably encourage that you do so early on, because even if you're planning to, let's say, say if you have an abrupt departure from a job, right? And then you're saying to yourself, well, you know, I kind of need to angle myself in a way where I'm not so desperate for work, right? So that if I'm working in one particular, because sometimes we have to shift. Sometimes you're shifting and sometimes you shift down in a sense where you may shift and you may be out of, you know, the trajectory that you were headed upwards, but you kind of still need to be able to kind of still feed into that future. This is a great opportunity here. So think about it this way. So say if you have your, your job, you're in your dream job, something happens, right? You have somebody that you just management, you can't work with, or you have a coworker who, you know, has, has gone from, being a friend to tox toxic enemy, right? So that you have a, you know, work environment where you have to remove yourself from that environment. There's no opportunity for growth. They lay you off. Layoffs are completely and totally outside of your control, right? If they have to do some changes because of inflation, whatever reason, you may not even know. You know, you just get the information that you've been laid off and that's the end of, your work within that organization. But that that could have been, you know, for you, a critical step for you to continue to climb upward. So how do you sow seeds into your future, even if you wind up having to short, you know, shortly after a year or two or three years working for a company become laid off and now you're unemployed? You know, how do you continue to sow seeds into a future if you thought that this company was what was going to be leading you upwards? Because, you know, starting at ground one or ground zero, um, at a new company can be very difficult for some, for some individuals. So for me, I would encourage you, if you learn about HIM, it's like you're kind of making a deposit. You know, you're kind of depositing in your future. And so as you're making those deposits into your future, you are working in a capacity, especially as nurses within healthcare, that while you may be providing direct patient care, and maybe your role does not necessarily involve HIM, because you're learning about HIM, you're learning about the connection between the work that you're doing. So you understand, okay, this information is going to be used this way. Oh, okay. So if we start collecting this information, it's going to help do this thing over here. And so then you are able to add more value to that organization, because now when opportunities do arise, you are not in the dark about what that role looks like or what they need that person to do. So another thing, and I said this before in a previous video about adding value. When you think about adding value to an organization, you always have to think about what are the things in your toolkit that you, that comes with you when they bring you on, right? What are the things that, what are the things that's in your toolkit that you can use to enhance um, an organization? You know, some people, it's their personality. And, you know, in some cases, you may have people with a wealth of knowledge, but their personality actually is what prevents them from growing with organizations, right? So you have to think about, you know, 
what is it that you bring to the table? And some of what you can bring to the table as a nurse with help with a uh, HIM background or HIM credentials, you're bringing that connection because as a nurse, you have the perspective, you understand the healthcare piece of it. You understand the delivery of care. You understand you know, how to speak and work with providers and physicians around care, um, care delivery and care coordination. So when you're making that connection, especially, you know, if you're interested in going to clinical documentation, you get to, or as working as a clinical documentation specialist, you get to bring all of that in there, right? So you get to bring that, that comfortability that you have talking with doctors. You get to bring that into what you do to enhance that organization, Right. Because now you have your coding knowledge along with your nursing knowledge. And together you're able to work with providers in ways and make impacts that maybe a nurse alone without a coding certification and maybe a coder alone without that clinical background can actually make. So I want you to think about entering into or considering health information management as a way of sowing seeds into your future. Right. Start now. It doesn't mean that your first job may not still be in nursing even after you earn your certification, continue to work in nursing because you're going to be able to have an impact in, in your nursing uh, work that's going to be very different than nurses who don't have a credential. Now, I'm not saying you're going to go be nurse know-it-all, but there's going to be information that you have that's going to be uniquely different than your peers. So think about it that way. So I want to thank you so much for your time. Um, when you watch this video, I want you to reach back out to me, you know, give me feedback, send emails to me. I'll have my email information. You know, it's always at the end of the video um, and also our websites where you can reach out to us. So I want to thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day. We want to hear from you. Schedule a free consultation or send us an email at advancednurses at acd4n.com or visit our websites, www advancednurses.info or www.acd4n.com.